Hi, everyone. My name is Sam Rollins. Um, I think it was a surprise to the administration that I was the last student to have taken a class with Susan Rasky. It was a surprise to me when they told me. It's the kind of improbable thing you just have to get used to because you're not going to know what it means. Over the past year, people closer to her professionally have remembered Susan Rasky, the writer and unflinching reporter with a steel trap attention who caught and analyzed every maneuver, every political character in play in Washington as a congressional correspondent for the New York Times. I can't know more about her or an, and her career and her contributions to journalism than I can find out by reading about her, so I'll leave, those, I'll leave that to those who have already done it. Though true to journalistic form, I am happy to steal a line from her obituary in the New York Times in which an old Washington correspondent that said, a House committee chairperson once, and I quote, fled into a men's room to escape her. <laughs> she waited. <laughs> but I remember the teacher, warm, imposing, teasing, challenging. I'm very happy to say she beat me up. Hers was the first class I attended after my first semester hyperlocal experience I had an overfull schedule, I was about to start working again, and I probably walked in thinking that the reported column would be a pretty fluffy class. Everyone else in the class was public policy students, and I thought I could probably coast through. She made it very clear very quickly that that would not happen. Susan Rasky liked my writing, so she attacked my everything else. She did this for everyone in the class, deciding which attributes most needed her stubborn and intense attention, and then pouring it on relentlessly. Her opinion was powerful, definitive in conversation, and she was never alone in it while her dog was in the room with her, and it always was. A scrappy little poodle mix whose input she asked for often, she would even hold up a hand sometimes to stop a student mid-sentence and ask the dog what it thought it was doing scratching at the door and whether it was really sure it wanted to leave the classroom right now. To say she took a particular interest in me would be naive, I think. She asked for meetings with me outside of class more than once, not so much to talk about my work in class as for my plans in my professional career. She was eager to point out both my promise and my shortcomings, though she was ready with fixes. Her interest was instantly familial, not just like an aunt, but like an aunt I actually have who's something of an elemental force herself. Only my family will get that reference, but. I promise it's true. No, I think it's probably more true to say that she took a particular interest in every student she worked with, and I was unwittingly lucky to have been one of the last. And at the J School, she was a breath of fresh air in that as much as she liked a reasoned argument, she loved an unreasonable rant. In her class, Susan Rasky wanted vinegar. She wanted writers red in the face. She played videos of Chris Rock, introduced me to Lois B Lewis Black when he came to campus, and she read Herb Cain aloud on our first day. The rant I learned can be a wonderful thing. From the little things every day that drive you absolutely crazy, like barrier area cyclists trying to kill themselves at you from every direction, to the massive tribulations tearing this country apart, like mass denials of climate change, the rise in moronic reality TV eroding America's perception of reality, to self-indulgent foodie culture gourmeting everything from ice cream to mac and cheese. <laughs> there is sometimes no better way to make your point than to lose your cool. And I think that's a good challenge we can carry with us in memory. Defend your guts and insist some good ideas into the world around you. And remember, it isn't always your job to be the voice of pure reason, not when your ideas need that extra push. Start with a little flame, was Susan Rasky's advice to me, and become irrational. <laughs>